Hey folks, how's it going out there? Hey, being in the electrical field most of my career, I understand the importance of voltage drop and the importance of making a good connection in any electrical circuit. So what I wanna do, I wanna pass some of that information along to you. Because getting good, clean power to your sonar units is, is very important. And if you do it right, it's not hard. So stay tuned, it should be informative and we'll get right to it. All right, so there's several different types of connectors. Um, some are a crimp on, which is like this. You have a male and a female. And there's different variations of these that you can use. <clears throat> uh, here's another type, like this. Uh, these, I only recommend you use if you really have to. What they do is you, you lay the wire with the insulation on it. You don't peel any insulation off. And you fold this over and you snap it shut with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers or something. And then you use one of these bladed connectors and you use it to plug in like that. Um, a lot of connections, a lot of parts, and not much surface area. So I'm all about surface area with the connection. Uh, center splice or a butt splice as they call them. Uh, that you slip one end of the wire in one way, one end of the wire in the other, and then you crimp it on both sides. Again, you got fairly decent surface area there, but the wires aren't actually touching each other. Now this, this is an insulated cap, and I really like these. All they have is just a barrel in the middle, and you stick both wires in that end and you crimp them down and the wires are making contact with each other so you get really good surface area with something like this you do have to have a crimping tool to use these and then of course your standard wire net and there's a lot of people out there say there's no place in automotive for a wire net but um i i don't know as i totally agree with that I, it's not what I would use. I use a lot of these um, sleeve or insulated caps. I use a lot of those. But in a pinch, a uh, wire nut does basically the same thing. And it twists the wires together. But it can damage the uh, strands of the wire. So there's uh, pluses and minuses. But there's one connection and that really the only minus is you got to have room and you got to have some extra tools solder so let's take a look at some of these connections and how to use them now these type of connectors are what's known as a posi lock or a locket style connector and they look pretty good they uh the only drawback to these is the strands are compressed against a metallic piece in the middle. So there's not really a wire to wire contact. They, uh, I think they would work pretty good. Unfortunately, I don't have any and I haven't tested them to see what the mechanical connection is like. But uh, I'm going to have to get some and try them. Now throughout the rest of the video you'll hear me reference newer style connectors and these are what I'm referencing. Now for me one of the biggest <clears throat> disadvantages to some of the newer connectors coming out is the fact that you're not always going to be connecting the same size conductor. So this is a number 10 AWG, this is a number 16 AWG you can see those are are very much not the same size so if you have a sleeve like this blue one's too small for the number 10 but it will work for the number 16 
if you go to one that'll fit the number 10, it's too large for the number 16. So, and a lot of the mechanical connectors are that way as well. You can see as I'm stripping these, I have to use different slots in my strippers. So with this particular connection, I could twist those together. Now here's another thing with the twist, the wire nuts, anything that's gonna twist them together. If you see there, that smaller wire is the only thing that twists. Not necessarily a real bad thing, but you gotta pay attention to that. Because when you start turning this, Look at that. You see how that's all twisted up? That's a problem. So the uh, wire caps kind of take that away. That's why I, I'd rather use a wire cap than a wire nut. Let me go get a crimper and I'll show you that. All right, so let's take a look at the different types of crimping tools that you got. You got these which come pretty standard at your automotive store and they're a combination. You can strip wire with them down here or you can crimp with them up here. Uh, not horrible by any means, but uh, not necessarily what's gonna give you the, the best results when you're making a crimp. So, <clears throat> You also have, and if you look, these look pretty much identical, but they're really not. This set, if you look in the jaws, it has insulated, whoops, it has insulated and uninsulated dies. The uninsulated die is going to pierce through your insulation if you use it for an insulated lug. Now, this set here, uh, both sizes are for the uninsulated, so you wouldn't want to use these. Okay, like I say, you could use either one of these. Um, I honestly, I prefer these. They do make a ratcheting type of a crimping tool as well, but it's not going to work for something like this too well. So I'm going to stick it in the insulated die and I'm going to crimp it in two hands. You're going to really crimp down on that. Okay. And that is not coming out. I will guarantee you it is not coming out. Now, what you can also do if you have more than two wires or you just feel better about it, take a tie wrap, zip tie, whatever you want to call it, and put that around there, cut it off. Now you, you have a mechanical connection with that small wire. You can see, so there's no way that's ever going to come off. The disadvantage to this is it takes up room. It takes up more room under your console, makes your bundles bigger. Um, but I still, I, I like this type. So when you talk about making an electrical connection, there's two factors you want to take into consideration. One is mechanical and the other is continuity or you know, how good the connection is, how well electricity will flow through it. Again, a wire-to-wire -wire connection is best. That's why I like these. For mechanical, the mechanical aspect of it, you want something that's not gonna pull off. That's why a wire nut for a mechanical connection 
It's fairly decent, but it can back off, it can twist, it can loosen. It doesn't necessarily have good mechanical properties. This type of a connector, or this type of a connector, they have fairly decent mechanical properties, but when you're crimping down on that wire, you're, you're actually uh, can be damaging the strands of the wire a little bit. So the pullout mechanical stresses it would take to break that connection are lessened because you've crimped on that. So that's one disadvantage to this type. And again, that's why you can take a tie wrap, put it on there, and then you virtually, if these wires get pulled, bounced around, you can't really, you know, break them apart. All right, so on to my favorite connection, solder. So we'll take a piece of number 16 and we'll take a piece of number 10 because for voltage drop, your wire going to your sonar or whatever you're soldering is probably gonna be bigger. Strip plenty of wire back. Look at that. No, no, I'm cheating, I'm using a vise. That's why if you're underneath your console or something, you really just may want to use the insulated cap or something along those lines. All right, now when you're making a connection like this with solder, you want to use rosin core solder. If you try to use just straight solder, it's not going to work too well. But the rosin core works really good. Okay, just feed that solder in there. And it takes more solder than you would think. What happens if you've ever soldered a, a pipe together, plumbing pipe, you get that sweating effect where the copper's actually kind of dragging it in. Now I've also heard people talk about wanting to have a reusable connection. And I can understand that. And I'm not trying to say that the newer style connectors don't work well. They probably work just fine. Like I say, make sure that gets good and warmed up and all the way through there because you're using that solder as a pathway for the electricity also. It's not just a mechanical connection. It's also going to help the current flow. All right, and then when you get done, and this is important, like right here, it would be no problem. I could slip the heat shrink on afterwards, but 90% of the time, you got to put the heat shrink on before you make the connection. 
And you can always tape the connection afterwards if you need to, but I really like heat shrink because it gives it more mechanical, uh, more mechanical strength. Now there, we haven't damaged the conductors and we have a good solid connection. Let's take just for the heck of it. Take and cut that in the middle and see what it looks like. Oh! That is just solid solder in there. There's no voids. All right, so there again, uh, if you buy a kit, uh, you know, one of these wiring harness kits, uh, go ahead and use the connectors. If you do, silicone grease, that's your friend. The thing I don't like about the, uh, the connectors that come with the harness kits and whatnot, is the wire's not making a direct contact to the other wire. It's got that piece in the middle, it's compressing it, compressing the wire in against a metallic piece, a metal piece. And then same thing with one on the other side, it's just compressing it. So I recommend using silicon grease to fill that void, to make sure it's watertight. And if you're using different size conductors with those connectors, I would think seriously about going to something like this. Prefer something like this, and if possible, solder it. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. Let's get out on the water and have a great day.